How many of you like aquariums? Mm -hmm. Me, I like aquariums. And check this one out, it's pretty cool. I love aquariums because I think it's really peaceful watching fish sometimes. It is peaceful watching fish. Well, yes, and I also love aquariums. Wait, uh, what's an aquarium? Yes, and also, what's a fish? You, 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 your fish. And, and an aquarium is the thing that you live in. You and me live in an aquarium. <laughs> Aren't you a little big for this? He means me. Ah, where did you come from? Okay, so fish can be fun to watch, but sometimes they can seem a little foolish. People say that fish can only remember things for three seconds at a time, so that means they aren't exactly the smartest creatures. What? Not the smartest? How dare you, sir? I can't believe he said that. Me either. How could he say that? Wait, uh, what did he say? It's a good thing they forget things, otherwise they'd stay mad at me when I said stuff like that. <laughs> and then we wouldn't be able to get along so swimmingly. <laughs> you get it? Get what? Oi, I hope I forget that. Okay, anyway, uh, sometimes we, you and me, not the fish, we can seem a little foolish because our actions, the things that we do, they, they don't make it look like we can remember things that we've already learned. And, and it's kind of a reminder for us today, like if, if, if we don't do something with the things that we've learned, it doesn't really do any good. Are you following me? Where are we going? Ah, where did you come from? Are you following me? All right, so how many of you know how to tie your shoe? If you know how to tie your shoe, go ahead and raise your hand up in the air and I want you to say, shoot a shoe. One, two, three. Shoot a shoe. Fantastic, that's cool. High fives to all of yous who know how to tie your shoes. And here's the thing. If you know how to do that, that means you have the knowledge. Everybody say knowledge on three. One, two, three. Knowledge. Fantastic. So that's cool. But here's the thing. If I know how to tie my shoes, but I don't do it, what happens? Right, right. Eventually my shoes get untied and I'm probably going to get tripped up. And that's the thing. That's what happens when we don't put knowledge, the things that we've learned, the things that we know, into actions. If I don't do something with what I know, it doesn't do any good. Knowledge is useless if you don't remember to use it. No, oh, I think I can remember that. Ooh, that is pretty good. All right, so let's say that together. One, two, three. Knowledge is useless if you don't remember to use it. Ooh, that's good. Did you come up with that? I uh, don't think so. What? Wait, what were we talking about? Wisdom. We're talking about wisdom. We're going to be looking at that in the book of James in the Bible, just like we did last week. We're finishing chapter three of the book of James, and it's all about wisdom, which has a lot to do with knowing, but also doing. But first, I think this opening has been a little fishy, <laughs> so we might need a little bit of a break because we just seem to be going around in circles. Well, it is an aquarium. What else are we going to do? Oh, well, sometimes I swim around in rectangles instead of circles. Rectangles. All right, well, interesting. Anyway, b before we dig into the Bible verses today and we actually get some wisdom from God, let's test our worldly wisdom with a quiz about our world. And we're going to play for points, so see if you can win. All right, it's time again for Lando's Pup Quiz. This time it's the Worldly Wisdom Edition. So, first question is worth 10 points. How many lightning strikes hit the surface of the planet each year? Is it A, 1.3 million, B, 4 million, C, 8.6 million, or D? I tell you, but I'd have to charge you. <laughs> charge, lightning, get it? Uh, okay, all right, well, the answer is... 8.6 million C. So if you got that right, you got 10 points. But now let's play for 20 points. True or false? There are 24 hours in a day. And the answer is for 20 points? False. There are actually 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. So not quite 24 hours. So now let's up the ante a little. This question's worth 30 points. The Earth is always rotating. But how fast is it spinning? A, 25 miles per hour, B, 132 miles per hour, C, 500 miles per hour, or D, 1,000 miles per hour. And the answer is, for 30 points, 
D, 1,000 miles per hour. Whew. And last, this one is going to be worth, oh, let's say if you get this question right, you win it all. All right, how fast is the Earth moving in its orbit around the sun? A, 1,000 miles per hour. B, 17,000 miles per hour. C, 67,000 miles per hour. Or D, like really super fast. And the answer is... C, 67,000 miles per hour. If you got that right, you win. But now it's time to... Oh, there's one more question. All right, what is it, Lando? <gasps> Who is the best dog on the planet? Is it A, Lando? Or... Oh, come on, Lando. Hey. So in James 3.13, James says, Are any of you wise? Then show it by living a good life. So he's basically saying that our actions, the things that you and I do, that's what shows whether or not we are wise. So think about that. Like the stuff that we know, that's the knowledge that we have, right? Okay. That knowledge is powerful, but only if we put it into practice. So it's kind of like it's this tool, but a tool isn't any good if you don't use it, right? A hammer doesn't do anything by itself, we gotta use it. So if knowledge is powerful and it's a tool, it's kind of like a power tool. <laughs> but here is the truth, children. If you don't use the tool, you are the fool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's say you've got a task, a goal. Uh, maybe it's something simple like um, cutting this board in two. What do you do? Yes, sensei! <laughs> oh great, it's Karate Josh. I know that I have a task, and I must use the tools that I have at hand, specifically my hands. Oh, Karate Josh, no, 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 use your head. All right, yeah, yeah, use my head, my head, my head's much harder than my hand. Good thinking, Sensei. All right, okay, here we go. No bad idea. No, 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 not, not your head, head, not, your, I mean like your head, like the things you know inside your head. Not quite, yeah. You know that powerful tool that you can use? Power, power tool, I see, yeah, I, I remember. Power tool. <laughs> yeah, that ought to do it. Okay. <laughs> yes, I'm glad you saw that. <laughs> Good lesson, Sensei says what? What? Exactly. Thank you, Sensei! Finish! So, a tool is useless if you don't remember to use it. Just like knowledge. Remember the big idea for the day. Knowledge is useless if we don't remember to use it. So James is basically saying that wisdom is knowing and showing. Knowing the right thing to do and showing it by doing it. So wise people are not prideful or jealous or bitter or competing with others just trying to get ahead. That kind of wisdom is not from heaven. No, no, that's not from God. That kind of wisdom is selfish, worldly wisdom. And if you, we live by that wisdom, our life is going to be a mess. So it leads to all kinds of evil and bad things. So don't live that way. That's not wise. He says, if you are wise, you're not competing with everybody. You're considering others. You're considering God and others. And that is wise. So what does wisdom from heaven look like? What does wisdom from God look like? Well, luckily, at the end of this chapter, James kind of gives some examples of that. And basically what he says is godly wisdom produces good fruit. So I got some little fruits here, and we're going to go through that little list. The first thing that he says is that the wise person is pure. So I got a little pear. You know why? Because if you say the name of this fruit, funny... It's like you would call it a pure. Yep, I did that. So anyway, the wisdom that is from God is pure. It is honest. A wise person is pure. It's honest, okay? And it also is peace-loving. And you might think that I grabbed this green bunch of grapes because it looked like peas, and I could say, yeah, the, the, the wise person loves peas. Uh, but peas are not a fruit, so I didn't want to do that and confuse anybody. The reason I did this is because if you love peace, then what you're doing is you're seeking unity. 
The person who is peace-loving is hoping to stick together with others because that's how God made us to live, to stick together. And also speaking of like wisdom and God and what God wants, the wise person obeys God. Now, I could choose this because it's the shape of an O and say, O, obey. Or I could say, hey, orange starts with O and so does obey. Uh, but what I really wanted to do is like think about it. If you always obey what God says and you do the right thing, then you can always go, well, no matter what, God, orange, you glad I did the right thing? I know I am. Yep. I went there too. Wowzers. So the wise person loves peace. The wise person uh, is pure. The wise person is considerate of others. The wise person obeys. Okay, when I say considerate of others, they're not going to be alone. They're going to be in a bunch, just like those grapes, just like bananas. What else do we got in there, James? Uh, the wise person is fair. They're not judgmental. They don't have selfish motivations, okay? They're not seedy like a watermelon. I don't know. All right, but they are also sincere, right? That means they're very, very honest people, and they're not fake because fake Fake fruit is no good. It leaves a bad taste in your mouth, just like a real lemon would. And again, the way that we're going to produce that good fruit is if we live a godly life, if we live with wisdom, if we know the right thing to do, and we show it by doing it. James closes things in the last verse of chapter 3 by saying, Those who make peace plant it, like a seed. They will harvest a crop of right living. So he's basically saying that wise people are like peacemakers. They are considerate of others. They make peace. They bring people together by not being selfish. They're not just considering themselves and how to be better than others. They're thinking, how can I make things better for others, right? And that is a great way to live wisely, godly lives, not just worried about me and be better than others, okay? I'm thinking about how to make peace and how to plant that seed so that more goodness can be experienced not just for me but for all and for the glory of God. So the big question here becomes how do we plant those seeds? We live wisely. If we know better we can do better. Yeah and uh, we use the power tool of knowledge that we have. And we practice wisdom knowing the right thing to do and showing it by doing it. Wow I thought you guys could only remember things for like three seconds. Well, I don't believe everything you hear. That's not true. That's actually just a myth. Yeah, scientists have actually proven that fish can remember up to five months. Was it five? I thought it was six. Well, that's what I remember. Hmm, so maybe that's another thing for us to remember about wisdom. Perhaps it is not just that we know and that we show, but that we are also open to learn new things and grow. Mm-hmm. No? Okay. All right, friends, it's time to re- Recap. Recap. Get it? Okay, cool. So we've been talking about wisdom, and wisdom is knowing the right thing to do and showing it by doing it. And our big idea today that we want to remember is that knowledge is useless if we don't remember to use it. So this week, let's remember one of the most important things for us to know as followers of Jesus. Jesus told us that the most important thing for us to do as far as God's commandments is to love God above all else and to love others as yourself, right? Not to put ourselves first, but to put God first and others first, right? That's what we want to do. And if we know that, let's show that. So let's think of some ways and put on our nice thinking caps this week about how we can not just know, but show that love. Will you pray with me? God, thanks for today. Thanks for this reminder. Thank you for the Bible where we can get wisdom from you and the way that you spoke through James in this book. Lord, help us to remember what we've learned from you and help us to have godly wisdom from you, not just worldly wisdom, and help us to make wise choices as we try to love you and love others. Lord, thank you for loving us, and we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Now's the time that you should pause the video so that you guys can discuss these questions and maybe you can get some wisdom about how to live this out.